Can you actually make a living selling greeting cards? Well, isn't that the million dollar or a hundred thousand dollar or whatever your magic number is question? As always, I will give you my honest opinion full of nuances. Yes, it's just one opinion, but I believe it's an informed one. Hi, this is Kathy from Easy Sunday Club. On our YouTube channel, we make videos on practical business strategies, how-tos, and occasionally watercolor tutorials. This channel isn't about making a million dollars from Amazon dropshipping business or investing in crypto. I just want to say that word in an art business video. We're not in this because we only want to make money. We're making and selling our creative work, and we want it to be creative fulfilling, but we also want to make a good living doing it, right? Now, before I share my answer to this question, I want you to take a moment and imagine a not so distant future five years from now, or even 10, where you're living your dream life and career. In that picture, are you selling hundreds of thousands of greeting cards to store all over the world? Or are you retired to the mountains and live in an Airstreamer because you made millions from investing in crypto? <laughs> okay, I'll stop, otherwise this video is not gonna age well. My point is, you most likely don't know what your future holds. I started imagining a different career only because the one I was in was making me depressed. I didn't know what plan B looked like. It's okay to not know exactly what your dream business or life looks like. And the best way to find out how to get there, however distant it feels right now, is to take the next step and then the next. Sometimes you take two steps forward and one step back. Other times it feels like nothing's happening and you feel stagnant. Progress is slow, but persistence will be rewarded with results. Before I continue down this rant, let me get back to the question. From my experience and from observing other businesses, I don't think you can have a successful business selling only greeting cards. Now don't come after me in the comments telling me I'm a dream crusher just yet. Just give me a few minutes as I share my perspective and maybe help you see things a little differently. Greeting cards, all things considered, is an easy thing to start selling. You don't need fancy equipment and special technical skills and you can set up an Etsy shop in one day. Because it's relatively easy, as in it has a lower barrier to entry, there will be a lot of people who will want to start there, and that's okay. There's no first mover advantage when it comes to selling greeting cards. You can start tomorrow and do better than me or another greeting card designer. Many people will decide they want to start selling cards every year, and many people will quit some will persist, others will move on to something else. That is the name of the game. You don't know which one you're going to be until you try. Also, almost all the big stationery brands started out with one product category. The two I can think of off top of my head are Em & Friends, formerly called Emily McDowell, and Rifle Paper. Most brands regardless of what they sell, started with one category of products, sometimes a single product. Emily McDowell, for example, said that her Valentine's Day card went viral and got her a huge wholesale order, and that's how her business took off. These brands usually made one product or one category of products, iterated to keep making it better, doubled down on their best seller to find more customers for them, and eventually branched out from there. I started out selling only art prints and originals of my watercolor, but today my best seller are my two baby blankets that alone brought me more sales than probably over half of my products combined. So don't ever feel the pressure that whatever you started with has to be the thing that you're stuck selling for the rest of your life. Obviously, I may label successful business differently, and we may disagree on what makes a business successful. If success to you means selling 100 cards a month, then yes, that's totally possible. But if you want to make enough money to make a good living, cover all your business expenses, give yourself a salary and pay for retirement, etc., then you're going to need way more than that. Like most successful stationary businesses, you're most likely going to need a diverse portfolio of products at various price points. If you only sell greeting cards, you're limited to one to two price points. If you sell them as singles or multiple packs, and you're limited to their profit margins. It becomes a pure volumes game. The goal in the beginning though, isn't to have the perfect assortment of products. It's actually to test things out and see what resonates with customers, what's selling well, 
and double down on that. From there, new inspirations may strike and there will be opportunities to grow organically that way. That's what happened to my baby blankets anyway. Lastly, this might be in direct contradiction to my first point, but it's one of the most important lessons I've learned in my first two years of business, which is it doesn't matter how I start or what my first product is, just going through the experience of setting up a business, making mistakes, and trying to grow it is an invaluable experience. My business has pivoted so many times since the beginning. I've added multiple streams of income and also removed a few. But each time when I'm at the edge of making a change, I become more and more comfortable with that change. I still experience self-doubt and stress from uncertainty and fear of failure, but I'm just more comfortable dealing with it because I have a feeling that things will work out based on past experience. I don't know what you call it. Maybe it's resilience. Maybe it's trained optimism. But this is the biggest mindset shift I've developed over the last five years. So instead of seeing things as a spinary success or failure, try to reframe it as, I'm curious if it will work. And if not, how can I improve it? You might just enjoy the process more. This video actually went down a different direction than I originally intended. It's not as cut and dry with numbers and strategies, but I hope it still inspire you to be a little more optimistic and a little less afraid to make the wrong move. I hope it made it clear to you that you don't have to have everything figured out. You just have to take the next step. I'm not here to promise you a million dollar empire like a lot of these YouTube ads that you see. I'm saying that the real experience you will gain will be valuable and no amount of self-help YouTube videos, including this one, can replace that. Good luck and I will see you next time.